Well guys, we have some tropical activity to track and one of those tropical cyclones will be impacting the southeast coast within the next two days. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, for each of these individual storms, so comment for both, what do you think their maximum intensity will end up being? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at one of those tropical cyclones and this one is the one that could be major for sure. This one, the sky is the limit, it's in the MDR right now offshore of Africa. So yes, there is a potentially major tropical cyclone on the way and it actually has some really good organization right now. We're gonna continue to track that one over the coming days, obviously, on this channel. Here's the one that poses a little bit more of an imminent but less intense threat here because of its limited time, but it is a very imminent threat. Uh, likely tomorrow will be the time it's impacting the United States. As you can see, there is a lot of tall clouds associated with this one uh, and it's not too far from the Bahamas. It's somewhere between the Bermuda and the Bahamas there. It's heading basically directly towards the west there and likely will be bringing impacts to Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, potentially even North Carolina as well. So we'll be taking a look at some of those a little bit later on as well within this video. Here's where that low pressure system is located there for the one in the MDR or main development region. So basically the middle of nowhere, as you can see, a lot of blue going on. So it's kind of hard to see where that is. But now that we look at the two day graphical tropical weather outlook, this gives us percentages as well. We can see both of them have a 20% chance of development over the next two days. So that one offshore of the United States has a pretty low chance of becoming a tropical storm, but that does not mean there won't be impacts. So I'll be talking all about that within this video. Also on the Patreon page, I did make an intensity guidance exclusive forecast on there. So if you haven't joined our Patreon page yet, I highly recommend you do so because we have an intensity chart that shows us exactly how strong I think each of these storms will get. So if you are curious about that, it's a very cheap. You can go check out the prices today. That's in the description and in the pinned comments down below. But yeah, both of these have a 20% chance of development and you could see their location at this point as well. That one down there, the one that has a one above it, the one in the MDR is right in the middle of the MDR uh, and conditions are pretty clear out ahead of it. So we'll be watching for this one to potentially develop over the next five days. Talking about the five day outlook, let's just take a look at it. And as you can see, this one has a 30% chance of development over the next five days. I do anticipate this one could go up for sure, especially with the track it's taking. This is a classic tropical cyclone track that frequently brings stronger storms. It looks like this one will be a 50-50 chance if it's going to head to the Southern Caribbean or the Northern Caribbean. But let me tell you, if it goes to the Southern Caribbean, it doesn't have as good of a chance of developing as if it goes north of uh, Puerto Rico, north of Dominican Republic, and north of Haiti. If it goes more towards the Bahamas, watch out because that is a zone where a lot of storms frequently go and intensify greatly. Conditions are usually far better in those regions. So that's something that we're going to need to watch over the next five to seven days, I would say. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for the second tropical disturbance offshore of the East Coast as well. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook here for that second disturbance. And as you can see, it's heading straight for Florida, Georgia, or South Carolina. Uh, it's not really certain uh, where it's going to impact exactly, but it will be somewhere in that zone. Here's the European model's probability of tropical depression. And as you can see, it's only about a 40 to 50% chance. But a tropical depression will bring some impacts potentially for these regions. Obviously, winds could be weaker in this type of a scenario, but it's kind of undetermined at this point what kind of rainfall we could be taking a look at. It really depends on what happens over the next 12 to 24 hours with this storm, but it can range anywhere from maybe a couple of inches to maybe, you know, five or more inches. We're going to need to really track this one and make sure uh, there's not going to be a flooding risk. At this point, it's leaning more towards a, a lighter risk of rain, you know, more in the, in the in the range of about half an inch to maybe two inches of rain, but that obviously could drastically go up as well. As we take a look at the probability of tropical storm, this model says there's probably none. So that's good news, at least. It seems like it's very s slim chances that there being a tropical storm threat here. Let's take a look at when this one could be impacting. And as you can see, this is at about 5 a.m. tomorrow, Monday, June 28th. And already this one's impacting in between Florida and Georgia, according to that European model. And on this vorticity, you can tell it's not some weak storm. This one does have some nice spin to it. Uh, so this would be a pretty decent uh, tropical depression, perhaps, or just a tropical uh, disturbance of some sort. But regardless, it could bring some impacts there to that region. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the probability of tropical depression on the entire Atlantic because we can see now that there's a 70 to 80% chance over the next three days of a tropical depression 
forming there with that second disturbance that is in the main development region there offshore of Africa. Once we take a look at that next three-day period, the three- to six-day period, that's going to be Wednesday, June 30th through Saturday, July 3rd, we can tell that there is a 70 to 80% chance of tropical depression status still, but this one takes it to the Southern Caribbean. Remember, I told you guys that is kind of going to be the, the weaker of the two options likely because storms that head to this area usually have a harder time developing, especially if they end up south of Jamaica. Uh, if this one could potentially go into this region but then hit uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti and maybe go north into the Bahamas, we have seen storms be more intense with that type of a solution as well. Um, but again, it, it it would be much weaker likely if it heads south of those regions anyway. Probability of tropical storm, however, is at about 40 to 50% chance during that period. Again, the 30th through the 3rd for the Southern Caribbean. So this model does feel like there is a possibility that this one could, you know, obviously be a tropical storm. And then beyond that period, we can see there's still some tropical development possible after that period, the five to eight day period, tropical depression status all over the place. So there will be more tropical threats coming up in the month of July, it appears, according to this European model. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for this disturbance that's in the MDR, also the intensity guidance from the models as well. And then we're going to take a little bit of a look at the simulated radar for that one that could hit the southeast coast. All right, now here's some spaghetti model guidance for this one. And this is our GFS ensemble model first off. And as you can see, there is some members that take it north of Puerto Rico. After hitting Puerto Rico, there is some that have it heading way further south towards South America. Uh, but most of these do have it staying quite strong and making it to the Caribbean. So we will likely be tracking this one for a long time. Here's the Canadian ensemble model. And this one's a little bit uh, worrisome, obviously. This one has it heading in the very similar situation. But remember... If this one goes over Haiti and Dominican Republic, it would definitely break up quite a bit, and that would bring some impacts to you guys there in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. We will obviously be tracking that threat. That would be very unfortunate for you guys, so we'll continue to keep you updated on that. But this storm has it afterwards potentially heading towards the Bahamas and intensifying and maybe impacting the southeast of the United States. So we'll be tracking that threat as well. There is some positive outlook once we take a look at all the models here because we do see that a lot of these have it curving out to sea uh, maybe scraping by Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, but not a direct hit on most of these, and then they have it curving out to sea. This would be the least impactful solution, and we can only hope that this is what ends up happening, because obviously there is no direct hit there on this type of a solution. So that would be really good news if we can see something like this happen. But again, I will keep you guys up to date, because these models change every six hours, usually. Now here's the intensity guidance for this one. Again, Invest 95L is what it's called. And almost all of these have it heading in towards tropical storm status over the next three days. So it seems pretty likely this one's going to be intensifying in the, in the medium range here uh, quite a bit given the, the circumstances it's under and the area it's in. It seems like conditions could be quite favorable. Now, last but not least, I will keep you guys updated on that invest that is in the, uh, the MDR or main development region offshore of Africa. But here's the one off the southeast coast and here's the simulated radar. This is by about 5 a.m. and you can see none of the rain has really made it on shore yet, but at about uh, tomorrow afternoon, I would say maybe about between 2 and 4 p.m. tomorrow, we can see that a lot of rain makes it on shore to Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, potentially bringing a flooding risk like I said before. So that is the time frame when this storm menace would be making its way on shore to the southeast. I'm going to try to update you guys on this one tomorrow morning, but it might already be too late. So this might actually literally be my final out basically forecast or update for this storm in the southeastern United States. Just stay safe. You know, there could be some flooding, but overall it should be at maximum a tropical depression. So, you know, as long as you just hunker down and, and, and don't drive if there's flooding, obviously, or things like that, you should be just fine. But just, you know, watch, watch your local warnings and watches and advisories and pay attention to that type of thing. Uh, and you should be just fine in that scenario. Anyway, for our confidence tab today, we're at a four out of six. Mostly the higher confidence is for this one that's going to hit the southeast, and the lower confidence is for the one that's heading into the main development region. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you, pre do you prefer a s summer that is hot and sunny, or do you like it to be kind of stormy? And Michael said, I, I like a little of both, uh, stormy and hot and sunny. So that's kind of how I feel too. I love the hot weather sometimes, but I also love the stormy weather sometimes as well. I'm sure a lot of you agree. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, 
Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Faligo, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cranenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page and, and this Patreon entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hairframes1 and Catbite as well. This will be located next to the subscribe button if you're interested in joining. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.